Hi, I'm Stuart McCurley Naylor from the University of Suffolk, and I'm going to present a quick comparison of some discrete and continuous biomechanical analysis techniques. In biomechanics, we generally investigate time series or one dimensional curves. So this could be a ground reaction force over time, could be angle time um, or torque time histories. And for kinematics, we generally have hundreds of data points per second, whereas for kinetics, this might be as high as thousands of points per second. But when we come to analyze the data, we typically throw away the majority of those data points and simply conduct our hypothesis testing on local maxima or minima, such as peak torque or minimum joint angle. But what information is there at other data points we might be interested in? And it's generally biased to test a hypothesis relating to an entire time series using a single discrete time point. So I'm going to compare a few different alternative methods on two different example data sets. The first is a comparison of flywheel and barbell back squat, looking at knee and hip flexion extension angles. And the second, we'll look at pelvis and thorax transverse plane rotations, comparing one international male badminton player to one regional standard male badminton player. If you want to play along at home with these comparisons, then within the ISBS abstract, at the end of the introduction, there's a DOI link to the Open Science Framework. And within here, there's a zip folder with all of the files and scripts and data that I've used within this comparison. OK, so I'll jump straight into the MATLAB example file. And if I run that, we'll go into the flywheel and barbell squat first. We can get an overview of flywheel and barbell knee and hip flexion extension angles. And I can then output the discrete, i.e. minimum joint angle values for statistical comparison. Opening those up within JASP, I can run a paired samples t-test, which tells us minimum knee angle. There's no significant difference between the two exercise types, whereas minimum hip angle, there is a significant difference. and the barbell squat has a lower or more flexed minimum hip angle than the flywheel squat on average. Alternatively, if I use a Bayesian paired samples t-test, and instead of p-values, I get some different information. So one of the advantages of Bayesian statistics is that it allows us to make probabilistic statements about the likelihood of both the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis. And I can use the Bayes factor here to show that an alternative hypothesis of a difference in minimum hip angle is around 64 times more likely than a null hypothesis of no difference. Another advantage is that we can plot the likelihood of different parameter values, such as the effect size. So here we can plot the 95% most credible values for the effect size, or you can intuitively read off what percentage of the most likely effect sizes are above a particular effect or are below a particular effect size. And we can also see our prior assumption of small effects being more likely than larger effects in either direction, and our posterior knowledge about the effect size after it's been updated with our data. And this can then be updated whenever we get new data or new studies. But to jump back into MATLAB, um, we'll conduct statistical parametric mapping on those normalized time series. And SPM is a method that uses random field theory to investigate the entire time series rather than a discrete point. And it uses random field theory to perform these multiple comparisons and hopefully provide us with a little bit more information. So for example, here, with minimum hip angle, or with hip angle, rather than just comparing this minimum time point, we're comparing across the entire time set, and we can now see that there's a significant difference in around the final 35% of the eccentric phase 
and around the first 40% of the concentric phase. So it's providing us with a bit more information than we would have got from just that one minimum value alone. And I could then output these values to do a Bayesian SPM analysis as well, for which the code is there to run in R. But I'll jump straight into the vector coding. And vector coding uses the vector between adjacent time points on an angle-angle plot. So in this case, if you plot hip angle against knee angle, then from one time point to the next, the movement, or I guess the displacement in two dimensions on that plot will tell you whether the knee is extending more than the hip or whether the hip's extending more than the knee, or whether both joints are extending or flexing at the same time in phase, or whether they might be anti-phase, where one is extending and one is flexing. Okay, so I'll end this example there. But if we look at this, we can see that both flywheel and barbell squats are in phase throughout. So in the eccentric phase, the knee and hip both flex at the same time. And in the concentric phase, the knee and hip both extend at the same time. However, at the start of the concentric phase, the flywheel in blue is slightly more knee dominant, whereas then towards the middle, the flywheel is slightly more hip dominant. But for the final 50% of the concentric phase, a flywheel squat is slightly more knee dominant. So it's time to show us a bit more information again than just looking at one joint on its own. And it tells us about this proximal or distal dominance of the exercise. However, we can then perform SPM on this, which will tell us whether these differences are significant. And in this case, with our 11 participants, they're not. The second example that we had was the international versus regional badminton jump smash. And in the interest of time, I'll jump straight to the vector coding, simply because there's some interesting results to talk about. And I'll conduct SPM on that. Okay, so firstly, we can see that there are some significant differences in both directions around the middle of the smash and also during kind of the latter third. But when we look at this plot again now, we can see a clear difference where the regional player, their pelvis and thorax movements were in phase throughout, except for some late thorax dominance, whereas the international player moves through being significantly more thorax counter-rotation dominant, then significantly more pelvis rotation dominant, and finally finishing off with thorax rotation. So this really demonstrates the pelvis thorax separation in the international player, but not the regional player. And also the difference in proximal to distal timing um, between the two. So it shows some really interesting analysis there that we wouldn't get by simply comparing maximum or minimum pelvis or thorax rotations. If you're interested in Bayesian analysis, then this paper is an excellent introduction and you can um, conduct the simple analysis on JASP, which is a free software. For SPM, I really recommend this paper and all of the MATLAB and Python codes can be downloaded from spm1d.org, along with instructions, etc. The Bayesian SPM is available the code in the supplementary materials of this paper on screen. For vector coding, then this paper gives a really good overview and some examples, um, looking at joint coupling coordination in running at different speeds. And the circular statistics used in MATLAB are available from this paper on the screen now. For more information, say so check out the ISBS abstract, which I'll make sure is available on ResearchGate. The references are there. Thank you very much for listening.